So guys, we're going to uh, splice in a motorcycle headlight. Look at this thing. It's a fucking monster. This is like the brightest light ever. I got, oh, I had one on my X-Class before I sold it, but fuck, I'm gonna put this light on any bike that I end up owning. It's so fucking bright. How many lumens again? It was like almost 5,000 or something, something around there. So this thing has like a, a whole bunch of wires in there because it has a bunch of different light settings. So what we do is our light kit has three wires for the headlight one you know of course positive and negative and then there's one for the high beams so what i do is because there's so many wires in here i will take half and put them on with just positive and negative and then typically the ones the lights that are the brightest i'll put on the high beam wire which I'll show you in a minute on the light harness. But we're gonna have to test it out, you know, turn on the power and just start touching wires together to find out what's what. But typically you can tell what is hot and what is, you know, negative. When you do this, you absolutely do not want to nick the wires. Because if they touch, you can cause a short and fuck everything. All right, so one, two, three, it's four wires. Not as many as I thought. But these are going to get spliced with those um, solder shrink wrap connectors that I like to use. Uh, this thing is great. So I'm going to uh, get some wire and make it quite a bit longer so that it can at least reach to where the plug is for our or the headlight is supposed to plug into the wire harness because we stuff pretty much the whole wire harness into the panel casing we got to make sure it's long enough so i'm going to grab some wire right here this is all my my light wire i'm going to find one that has uh that has four wires in the casing this one is five. So we'll just use this one. One of the wires just won't be used. So inside this casing, there's five wires. So I'm just gonna measure this real quick and see exactly where it needs to land. So if the light is going to be right here about, this why this right here is for our headlight so i'll make it long enough to reach there and if anything make it a little longer so that there's some play so where my thumb is is where i'm going to cut it and you can see on here that there's three wires the brown is positive the black is negative and the blue is the high beam so we'll play around with this once I put the extension on and find out what lights are what on that other light over there. So I'm going to cut this thing. Really wasn't that much wire that we needed. So once we splice one end of this to the light, the other end I'm going to make a, a connector out of so that the light can be removed if, if needed. But as for you guys, if you wanted to just cut off the connectors and use those uh, shrink wrap crimp connectors, it's not a problem, it'll hold. So there we go. We got all the uh, the wires spliced together. We, they're all color coordinated. The only thing that sucks is there was no blue, but I would put blue to green, but all the other color, colors match up. 
So it'll be pretty simple. Red is positive, black is negative, and yellow and blue will be two different light features. So now that they're all spliced together, I personally like to waterproof it completely. So I'm going to take shrink wrap and slide it over and just cover up the whole thing completely. E even though this is pretty much waterproof anyway, I personally just think that it looks cleaner this way. Gonna need a fatter piece of shrink wrap, possibly. <laughs> yep, luckily I have one. Some that is a little fatter. Gets kind of thick when you have areas that are double layered with the splicing. There's one. Let's heat it up. I, can, I already did one here, if you can see it. Put one piece here. I just think it looks cleaner when you do this. You could always tape it too if you don't have a big box of shrink wrap like I do. Brown and black are positive and negative. So brown is positive and black is negative and yellow in the middle is the high beam. So as for this, we're going to put pins on the end of each one of these and make a Hugo connector that will adapt to the the Hugo connector that's already on there. You guys don't have to do that. You could literally just cut off the Hugo connector and use crimp connectors and put them together if you want. Because not everybody has all of these, you know, different things laying around. So of course, uh, we'll put the red to the brown and the black to the black. Well, whichever one of these is dimmer, I might, we'll probably end up putting it with the positive. So you'll have two lights going on when you turn your lights on. And then this will go to the yellow. So when you hit the high beam button, the high beams will light up. Tip, typically, there is a specific light for high beams. But then there is... I guess a secondary feature, whatever the hell that may be. It, it, I guess it depends on where that light is, how bright it is. Maybe it should be with the running. Maybe it should be with the high beams. It's really up to you. I wouldn't say that it particularly matters. So I guess let's put this last piece of shrink wrap on and find out. We're just going to start touching wires together to figure out exactly what is what and then we'll know exactly where everything is going to go. So um, we ran the headlight through the bag. This is where the headlight is going to plug into on the light kit. Sometimes it ends up being this uh, four pin connector, but there's only three pins inside of it. And this, other times it ends up being a three pin connector. Either way, the colors are usually um, brown, black, and blue, or brown, black, and yellow. So brown is, uh, brown is positive, black is negative, and blue is high beams. If you guys, uh, feel like getting real fancy with it, you guys can make the Hugo connectors on anything extra that you want to add in here. It's nice to have the connectors so you can, you know, remove things or... Unplug them if you need to because if you just splice them together, you're gonna need to cut it to get it off Which you know kind of sucks. It is nice to have a connector a box of Hugo connectors is probably like 20 30 bucks on Amazon. That's where I got mine Yeah, when you put them in you just got to make sure the pins are straight but with the Hugo connectors You also got to get a Hugo crimper and the Hugo crimper uh, it looks like this. I don't know if you can see because it's kind of dark. So I'm going to show you how this works because we're going to have to put a connector on these three wires here. So 
If you look inside this, this one has the pins. So technically this is the mail. So uh, where'd the box go? Let me grab uh, the female part of that. So it may seem like this is female, but there's actually a part that goes inside here and the pins will slip in to that. So just to show you what they look like, these pins are what is inside this connector. A lot of controllers have these. And then these pins, I'll show you what these look like, go in the opposite connector. So the pins actually slide into here. I, could, I guess I could show you real quick. I'll just grab a pin. So once they're together, they slide in like this. So I'll show you uh, how to do this real quick in case you ever need to. It's pretty fucking easy. So if the wires are real skinny, like these ones, these little tabs are usually a little too long and it'll end up cutting the wire when you crimp it so I just trim them off and make them even with uh, this flange here so this first flange crimps the rubber so the rubber should end right in between these two flanges and then the exposed wire goes in this longer part so you crimp here on the rubber and then crimp here to crimp down on the uh, copper of the wire. So let's put one of these on. You see the Hugo crimper? You put the back to one of these nubs depending on the size of the wire. Usually it's the biggest one or the second biggest one. I usually do the, do the bigger one. So we let it slide in there a little bit once it's in. We'll take a wire, slide it in there. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. So I get it just to where I could see the rubber just a little bit. And then crimp. You don't want to squeeze it too hard or you can end up cutting the wire. So we crimp it there and then we do it again right here. I usually, yeah, usually got to do it twice to get the whole thing. And that one is done. So I'm going to move this out of the way and we'll do the next one. Trim these down. It's exactly the same for the uh, pin part of it. Ugh, so tight on space. You know what? This one is just like a little bit too long. I'm just going to clip it real quick. So these little tabs on the back are what hold it in. I like to open them up a little bit more so things don't come apart. Because once you slide it in, that's going to catch. Alrighty, so it's like this. We tied in. Uh, there is like a line light which is the yellow wire. So we tied it in with the positive, so it'll be a part of the running light. And then the green is the high beam, so that will only turn on when we push the high beam button. So... 
just so I don't get confused. Oh my. Get in there. There we go. And then up here goes the blue. Looks like there are in there all the way except for this one. I think it just needs to be pushed in a little more. There we go. Just give every single one a tug. Make sure nothing comes out. I'm going to hot glue these. I don't trust the Hugo connectors. So I like to put hot glue on the back around here. Just so nothing comes apart. So let's test it out. Let's turn on the light and see what the hell it looks like. So this is the light. And then the high beams, prepare to be blinded. Boom. Awesome. Look at that. High beams? Boom. This is like by far the brightest fucking light yeah. I've ever seen. Look and it's fresh. 